Anas Niaz, a mechatronics engineer, is the founder and CTO of Bionic. He has represented Pakistan in national and international forums and is also a radio host and social entrepreneur. Today, he will talk about the success story of Bionic and how it transformed lives through technology. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and uh, thank you, PTCL, for inviting Bionic and giving a wonderful opportunity to uh, showcase amazing technology that you will be seeing here. So we will show you that the fourth industrial revolution is not a dream. It's already started and you will you have to wait a bit and then you will see how uh, Pakistan is catching up for this technology. So uh, prosthetics, the history of prosthetics is almost thousand years old. And from many ages, people are developing prosthetics and making them with words, uh, with iron. Probably most of us has seen um, Game of Thrones uh, and uh, you might have recognized uh, Jamie Lannister wearing a prosthetic arm. Um, and you have seen him that how uh, his life was very difficult after receiving that arm. So uh, that is actually true. Uh, people are uh, like, the life ends when you talk about the uh, arms because most of the things you always do with your arms, even if you think about the last activity you have done, imagine that without an arm, how can you perform that activity? Um, while you are texting someone, while you are having a, a glass of tea, anything, anything. So uh, it's very complicated and it's very challenging and it's a truly a huge blessing that we uh, we really miss out every day and we are using it very casually uh, without knowing its its importance so giving a world a helping hand so when we talk about world there are a lot of people who are suffering from arm amputation even in pakistan only 6 million people are having this problem and it's a huge number so imagine uh, your life and their life, that how they are spending their life, like we don't have the proper infrastructure, we don't have uh, the proper medical centers where they can get treated. But again, um, what can we do? So uh, technology has the answer for it. So as you can see, uh, 6 million, 8, uh, 0 0.8 million, so a lot of people are suffering with these uh, problems. So why are these problems occurs? So first we will discuss about it. So congenital problem disorder, uh, it's happened uh, because of family marriages, uh, very common in Pakistan and uh, due to untreated water supply, which is very common, unfortunately. Second, uh, electrocution. By the way, the girl you can see in this picture, uh, she's Sanya. She lost his arm due to electrocution and um, she recently, uh, yesterday she got an arm. So uh, the purple one, I guess, you'll be seeing there, uh, her video online, inshallah. So these problems occur because of uh, negligence and a lot of people does not know that uh, uh, electricity is uh, very harmful. And we really need to educate our child. We re really need to educate our society because what happened is that uh, sometimes if some electrical board is like not working, so we think, okay, we can fix it out. And uh, unfortunately, as an engineer, parents think that now you are an engineer, you can solve any problem you will see. So uh, unfortunately, we have to uh, educate our society for this. And uh, I'll definitely invite one more uh, beneficiary of Bionix. And he is suffering from the same problem. And you will sh uh, he'll share his, uh, his story with you. So congenital, accidental, and electrocalation. This is a huge problem. And unfortunately, since the first day of Pakistan, we are in the situation of war. And uh, in war, it's not easy. We, we usually say that, okay, we can fight war, we can win, and a uh, lot of things. But you, you cannot imagine the consequences happens after the war. It's, if, you, if you visit Fatah, if you visit Peshawar, you will see a lot of problems. Uh, Five-year-old, uh, five-year-old girls, boys missing their limbs. Uh, they don't know where uh, their life will end up now. So, do you think that uh, unfortunately these are the prosthetic uh, which are available? 
and uh, its weight is 1.5 kgs. So imagine something hanging by your shoulder, which is 1.5 kg, and uh, how you will gonna move it? You have to like uh, pull your uh, neck, and then it will just open a bit, and then it will close. So this is this is like um, a misery. You cannot do anything with it. It's and why this is like uh, this way because in our society, uh, whenever we see someone wearing uh, with uh, some disabled person, so we ask them what happened, why happened, wh like what's the reason behind this. So they really don't want to listen uh, these words every day because they want to move on, they want to live their life uh, in a better way. So what we did, we uh, innovated this product with the technology and uh, now this product is um, almost 0 0.5 kgs weight and uh, sorry 500 uh, grams and uh, we removed the harness so this is actually a technology that is changing this uh, product which is very important so as you can see Hassan he's also from Pindi he lost his both of his arms due to electroculation and uh, he was wearing these prosthetic arm uh, which uh, he cannot move it actually it's it's just we call it dumb prosthetics and uh, the the reason why he he just wear it because he don't want to uh, answer a lot of questions when he's going out so now have a look so i will call eyes uh, mustafa on the stage He's the, you can say, 21st century man, the bionic man. So technology and fourth industrial revolution is here. Assalamualaikum. My name is Ayaz Mustafa and I'm 15 years old. Uh, I love animals, uh, every kind of animals. And I also have a lot of them at home. So last year, uh, when I came back from my football ground, I saw a pigeon uh, on a high voltage uh, wire and I thought it was ill. So in the evening when I came back, uh, I saw it, uh, it was still over there and I thought I should res rescue it. So I went up uh, and tried to rescue it with an iron rod. So uh, that high voltage uh, wire caught me. It was like uh, I was free falling. So after I was uh, in the hospital, the doctor told me that uh, he's, going, he's going to amputate my arm. And from that moment, I knew that it's gonna be hard. So uh, I had research and I found bionics. So from that day, bionics, uh, getting a bionic arm became my dream. Uh, I got it two weeks ago. I was afraid uh, before getting an arm, I was afraid to go out because I, uh, people asked a lot of questions and they used to stare. Uh, uh, but I started going out. My friends helped me a lot. My parents, I had my parents' support, uh, my teachers, and a lot of people. So when I came to Karachi, it was really hard because my fam most of my family members are over here and it was hard to face them. So when I came here, uh, I, I don't know what to say to them. It was, it was really hard, but when I got my arm, it was easy to face them and tell them, and it was very easy to go outside to show, and show everyone that I have this arm. Wonderful. Uh, so uh, the reason we made this black arm is because we want people to believe that they are living in 21st century. They are living in the technology uh, uh, innovation world. So now you see a, uh, someone with the bionic arm, with different color, whatever he likes, whatever he, uh, his choice is. So we will definitely think about how we can make it in a better way. 
So this is how your brain work. You will start thinking. And uh, the best thing I forgot to mention is this arm is actually controlled by the brain. So all he has to do is to think about that, uh, about his fingers, about his previous arm, and he, he can just like close it uh, magically or with the technology, you can say. So he's still learning. So uh, moving towards our slides. So these are few possibilities that... Uh, Thank you. It's, it's uh, an amazing work that we are doing. We really feel proud onto it after seeing such a stories. So uh, these are a few possibilities uh, that uh, people can do. Uh, I, I remember a story of Hassan that I showed you uh, in a previous slide. I asked him, how do you use your prosthetic arm? How do you use your bionic arm? For example, if you want to go out and have something, then how are you you're going to uh, uh, do that? So he told me that, I have to think one day that how I'm going to uh, perform that task. For example, he told me about the uh, scenario that uh, one day he, he wants to go out uh, and uh, he wants to have a drink uh, from a shop. So he practiced one day, one whole day just to go there, grab a bottle and have a sip and come back home. It's a very small task. It's a very small task. We, we, we really don't think about it, right? But these people do because it's very challenging for them. So, um, Alhamdulillah, we are living in a technology age and we are changing it very rapidly. Uh, this is Mustafa raising Pakistan flag. Uh, it's, this area is very windy and uh, he's almost five years old. Same congenital problem. So, Alhamdulillah, we have uh, represented Pakistan everywhere, uh, internationally, nationally, and we are trying our best to bring out the positive image of Pakistan. And we believe after inspiring from our story, you are going to start the same thing and you will going to, uh, hopefully you will be making better arms than us, inshallah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, if you talk about international market, the cost of a bionic arm starts from $10,000 and it goes to $70,000, which means Pakistani koi 70 80 lakh rupee. It's very expensive. So with the technology, with the innovation, we are trying to reduce its costs and we are trying to bring it down in like Pakistani 60,000 rupees so that we can export it internationally. And um, hopefully we'll be able to make it by February, inshallah.